tell it on the mountain. We know that very few of us will physically climb a mountain and to reach that peak wherein we will speak out from the mountain top that Jesus Christ is born. Metaphysically and spiritually, it means just this. The mountaintop is your higher state of consciousness within you. The mountaintop is the high state of spiritual consciousness within you. And when you reach that higher state of consciousness, and as the song says, tell it, not only are you speaking it outwardly to all that may gather, gather but first and foremost, you're speaking it to every fiber of your being. Every cell, tissue, and organ, every muscle, every bone within your body has a measure of intelligence. So when you tell it on the mountain, when you speak it, you're speaking it from that higher state of consciousness that is within your physical body. And you're speaking to the very life that emanates, emanates every cell, tissue, and organ within your body. For it's all life and it is intelligence. So in your meditation, we ascend to the mountaintop within you, that higher state of consciousness. Speak it within you that the Christ consciousness is now born within you. And so it is. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Luke. 11th chapter, 27th through the 28th verse. And it came to pass as he spat these things, Jesus. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, speaking to Jesus, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the path which thou hast stuck. But he said, Jesus, but he said, Yea, rather, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And thus is scripture reading of St. Luke 11th chapter 27 through the 28th verse. Again, I say unto you this morning, blessed. Now, when we read this scripture, we have to go beyond what it is saying literally. The lady approached Jesus and she truly was amazed and she said unto him, bless be the womb. Speaking of Jesus' mother, through which he passed or came through. But she also said unto him, and the path 
which thou hast sucked, meaning his mother's breasts. Bless the womb that bear that bear you, and bless the breast that you suckle. And what this means is she was recognizing the mother that bear that gave him birth and the milk from her breast that fed and basically sustained his physical body. But Jesus says, yes, that is so. But the truth is, blessed are those that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those that hear the word of God and put it into practice, demonstrating the power of the word. For it is the word of God that first maintains and sustains the soul. The word of God. is the life within the physical body. You see, the milk of his mother's breast partially res responsible for the maintaining and the sustaining of his physical body. But the word of God within that physical body is the life that supports, that maintains, and sustains the physical body which we have. So the master teacher Jesus was saying the most important thing in life is not the basically of feeding the physical body, but hearing and following the word of God. For when we attune ourselves to the word of God, when we live by the word of God, as we move and have our being in the world of God, it will maintain and sustain the physical body. That is, as many of you have heard me say, I am. Is the God source, the God consciousness within you. Scripture also says that we cannot live by our own knowing or what we think we know. We must live by the word of God. And we must listen. In meditation this morning, it was revealed to me, it came to me as meditating on the scripture. To hear the word of God and keep it. I was reminded of times past and even to the day of how the young children, they hear the words of their parents because the parents is always trying to keep them on the straight and narrow. They hear the word. They hear the guidance, the instructions. But a lot of them don't keep it. They hear the word. It goes in one ear and out the other. Some of you could attest to. Living at home, we have within our consciousness, our mind, 
I'll be so glad when I'm old enough, grown enough to leave this place and to go out and be on my own. I don't have to listen to what mother is saying. I don't have to listen to what father is saying. I'm going out here and do it according to the way that I feel. How it resonates with me. We haven't listened to the truth that was given to us, told to us by our parents. Those, those that have Cross the bridges of life that we must one day face. Scripture says, lean not unto thy own understanding. We get to the point in life where we think we know it all. Can't be told, especially, you know, when we turn 21. We grown folks. Nobody can tell us now how to live. We grown, we do it on our own. We're not children anymore. But we're always children of God. We have to always listen. If we want to grow and mature, In the spiritual things of life. We have to listen. Because we don't know. We have to listen. To those who have a measure. Of spiritual understanding. And some wisdom. Makes no difference how educated you are in the things of the world. How much do you know of the things of God? That's the key. That's the answer to life. In knowing the things of God. Nowhere in scripture does it say that anywhere, any of Jesus' disciples went to school and was educated and had all of these degrees. Doesn't say that Jesus went to school and had degrees, doctor degrees and all of these other kind of degrees. But it does say that Jesus was following the direction of the spirit within him. Many times Jesus spoke and said unto the multitude, to his disciples, it is not I that doeth the work, but the Father in me. Which means that Jesus was listening. Jesus was following the instructions that was given unto him. And in listening and following the instructions that was given unto him, we go back to that opening song. Go tell it on the mount. For by listening and following the instructions of the Father Spirit within him, Jesus was able to raise up his consciousness and bring forth the Christ within him. And therefore, from that higher state of consciousness, he was able to speak it out to the world. For he had come to know the very essence, the truth of his being. Now I have to say to you, there's a lot of folks that does not want God to be a part of their life. They don't want God interfering in their businesses. Don't want God to know everything that they are doing. They only want God when they are in need of something that they can't handle themselves. Let me turn to God and see if God can give me the answer. 
Let me turn to God and see if God can help me. But you know, it's not all the time that we are going to hear the word of God from the outside of us and we can accept it. But to truly hear the word of God and to be able to accept it, depend on it, and to build on it, we have to get still and turn within and listen. Does not scripture say be still and listen to the still small voice within you? The voice of God continuously speaking to us, in us. But we've, we've drowned out the voice of God within us. We're listening to all this stuff out here. All the confusion, the distractions, the chaos, and we revel in this stuff of the world that's constantly bombarding us 24-7. We even get on our cell phones and we listen to it. We turn on our the radios. We turn on our televisions. Anywhere we can hear stuff from the outside world, we are tuning into it. And we are tuning out the words of truth within us. And then... As they all say, when all hell starts to break loose, we seek to find an answer or relief. And where do we go? And we sometimes say, God, why is this happening to me? God, why are you doing this to me? God, why are these things falling down on me? Well, let me tell you something. From experience, life is trying to get your attention. Life is trying to get your attention. Wake you up to the truth of what you've been denying and ignoring. There's an old saying makes no difference as to how you crack the nut as long as you get to the meat. And the meat is our consciousness. Sometimes life will beat up, beat us against the head, the back, the back everywhere. Beat us all on our lungs to get our attention that what we are doing and the path that we are treading is not the right path. It's not the path of truth. And so we have to listen. We have to look at these challenges and these experiences and the pain and the suffering and say, what is it that I'm doing to bring these things upon myself? God didn't bring us into this world to suffer, to experience pain, to experience lack and limitation. We came into this world to be fruitful to multiply, to be abundantly blessed. 
and to have the windows of abundance open so wide that the good that will flow down upon us, in us, and through us, we will not have room to hold it all. And so why are we experiencing pain and suffering, lack, confusion, being stressed out, no peace of mind, no joy, no happiness, because we're not listening to that still small voice within us. We're listening to all the noise of the world, which can only lead us down a path of destruction and failure, pain and suffering. You know, when you was a young child, some of us, well, some of us never been children. I'm one. Don't know what it is to be a child. Took on the responsibilities of an adult when I was eight years old. So I don't know what it is to be a child, to have a child's life. And when you don't have that, you're truly missing out on something. But for those of us that have experienced the life of a child to be at home and not have to worry, parents taking care of everything, they feed you, they clothe you, they provide a shelter over your head. I mean, you, all you have to do is just wake up and, and sleep and play and have fun. And in a child's life, there's not a, they don't know anything about worry. They don't know anything about lack. They don't know anything about suffering and pain as we grown folks do. The mother and the father provides everything. And you know, most of the time, those children do not ask for anything because the mother and the father already know what their needs are. Already know. When they brought them into the world, they already knew what their needs were. And they were prepared to provide for them children. Well, we are children of God. And God has already prepared everything that we could ever need while we are on and in this physical body on this planet. All we have to do is listen and follow instructions as grown folk. God will take care of you. I'm a living witness to it. I am a living witness that if you take the time and be still and go within yourselves and listen to the still small voice that is constantly speaking to you, leading you and guiding you and pointing you in the direction that you should go, all of this worry and fear and doubt and frustration will flee from you. You see, when you're children at home, you don't even worry about whether you're going to have some food or whether you're going to have a bed to sleep in or whether rent going to be paid or, or whether you're going to have clothes on your back. You don't worry about them things. All you want to do is get up and maybe eat and have some fun. It, a child's life is about having fun. Being happy and having fun. And we as adult children of God should be able 
to continue to do the same thing. Knowing that whatever our needs are, the Father, not that which is outside of us, but that source that is within us will continue to provide, will continue to protect, will continue to bless and to heal. If we're willing to listen and follow instructions. And God is not going to do to us like some of us do to our children when they're at home and don't follow instructions. We put them out. Okay, well, if you don't want to stay here and, 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 and follow my instructions and living according to my rules, then you got to go go find your other place. Go find your own place. Do like you want to do. But if you're going to stay here in my house, in my home, where I pay rent or the mortgage, where I'm buying the food and, the, and, and whatever, the toiletries and all that other kind of stuff, then you've got to follow the rules of the house. Well, if you don't want to follow the instructions and the rules of God, then you got to go out there and try to make it on your own. And it's going to be tough times. You know the story about the prodigal son? Had everything. Told his father, okay, you give me my little bit of inheritance and I'm leaving your house and I'm going to go out here and, and, and do my thing. And it wasn't long that he got out there and squandered what he had and he was hungry. And it said in the scripture say he was sleeping and eating with the hogs and the pigs. And then the thought came to him, hey, I don't have to live like this. I can return back to my father's house and be happy. I can be well fed. I can be dressed. I can be at peace. Sometimes that's what it takes for us to get the message. We have to go out there and experience the hardships. We have to go out there and experience the pain and the discomfort and the distrust before we realize that there's a better life, there's a better way. If I just return back to my father's house, returning back to that father's consciousness spirit that is within me that is within you and I and as I've said many times and will continue to say there is no place that you can be that God is not whatever it is that you're going through right now you have to realize and know and understand that the presence of God is still right there Waiting for you to acknowledge. Waiting for you to wake up. Waiting for you to listen. And follow the instructions. Or follow the still small voice that is speaking to you. Let me finish by saying, whatever befalls you, that you are not willing to accept, don't place it on anyone else. Everything that falls down upon us, everything that comes to us, be it good or bad, we have to take responsibility. We create our good 
or our ungood. God doesn't do it to you. The world doesn't do it to you. We do it to ourselves. So as we continue this Christmas celebration, celebrating the birth of Christ, let us celebrate the birth of Christ within us and not be caught up about and with all the commercialized things of the world. Know the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Christ within you. God bless. Namaste.